Senator from Delaware. Thank you. Uh, you've had a long day, Mr. Justice, but from the time I've been here, it seems like you've had a pretty good day. Um, and let me uh, uh, at least close out my questioning by uh, asking for a couple of clarifications and uh, also to go into a little bit the uh, privacy questions, Ninth Amendment. Get to make sure I have the right title of the article. Uh, referred to as the Panhandle Magazine article. Yes, sir. <clears throat> I understand that one of my colleagues quoted you. Uh, the provision that said, I do not care how analytically consistent with analogous precedent such a holding might be, nor how socially desirable the judge's view, no, nor how socially desirable in the judge's view. If it contradicts a long and continued understanding of the society, as many of the Supreme Court recent constitutional decisions referred to earlier in fact do, it is quite simply wrong. There will be no relief from the most far-reaching intrusions of modern, the modern judiciary until the Supreme Court returns to this essentially common law approach to constitutional interpretation. Now, as I understand it, if in fact it were a, uh, a long-established uh, societal view, it would Why don't you explain it to me? Uh, let, let me? Let me try, Senator. I'm, I am deeply mistrustful of my ability, without any guidance other than my own intuition, to say what are the deepest and most profound beliefs of our society. And that's what, that's what it means to say that something is constitutionally required. It's, it, it, it is in accordance with the deepest and most profound beliefs of our society. I find it difficult to come to the conclusion that something qualifies for that description when neither at the time the constitutional provision in question was enacted was it in fact the practice of the society as demonstrated by the laws that the society enacted nor at the present time is it that way. Now, I can understand, and you get into the debate between the evolutionists and the original meaning types uh, when you say, well, what if it's everybody now thinks it's awful and there are no laws on the books of this sort today, but there were in 1789, so it must be constitutional. It seems to me that's a, that's a good debate. But I find it very difficult to, to say that it's contrary to our most fundamental beliefs when both in 1789 and today all of the states have, you know, permit the practice in question, whatever it may be. Once you don't give me that to hang on to, Senator, I worry that I'm, I'm left with nothing to tell me what, uh, what are our most profound beliefs except my own, my own little voice inside. And I, don't, I do not want to govern the society on the basis of that. Well, let's talk about the Ninth Amendment in that context. The decisions, and I don't expect you to comment on how you would rule, but the decisions that have arisen that have been somewhat controversial, where the right of privacy is asserted as being a right that is protected or recognized under the Ninth Amendment. I guess maybe that's the place to start, the Ninth Amendment. Do you believe that the Ninth Amendment, in fact, implicit in the Ninth Amendment, is a recognition of a right called the right of privacy? Not to what extent that applies, but that there is such a thing as the right to privacy. Um, I, I think that's, in effect, asking me to, you know, to, to rule on, on cases. I, I can say the Supreme Court has held that there is such a thing as a as a right of privacy. Well, they they, haven't, tied it, they haven't tied it to the Ninth Amendment. As, as far as I know, there's, there, there, there's no Supreme Court holding that rests 
any any right exclusively on the Ninth Amendment. They, they mentioned well, the Ninth in, in a litany of, uh, of, of amendments from which uh, various penumbras emanate, and uh, uh, do you believe the Ninth that there was is among such them. a thing as a constitutional right to privacy? Not n not delineating whether it's a whether, for example, uh, uh, the right to terminate a pregnancy relates to the right to privacy or the right to have engage in homosexual activities in your home is the right to privacy or the right to use contraceptives in your home is right but is in a in, in, in a philosophic sense is there such a thing as a constitutional protected right to privacy I, I don't think I can answer that senator without uh, violating the line I've tried to I've tried Jeez, to hold judge uh, I, I don't know how you I can I can tell you that, that that's what what certainly a number of Supreme Court opinions now say. Well, and, and but there, you know, there's somebody may come in and say, uh, you know, just as uh, somebody might come in and say, uh, uh, um, Marbury versus Madison was wrong, that it doesn't exist. I, sure, they may come in and say that, that it shouldn't not. exist. I, I, I do not want to be put in the position of having tell, you know, I'm sorry, I, I believe in a right of privacy because I told the committee. In, in connection with uh, well, the it's considering my nomination that I believe in it. I, well, the fact you believe in a right to privacy doesn't mean that the that there's going to that a case before you in fact rise to the level of being guaranteed that right. I mean, I think you're I think you're being a, a little bit disingenuous with me here. If in fact you conclude that there's an existing right to privacy, that in no way predisposes you to have to rule one way or another about whether or not a right is claimed as being qualified under such a right no senator there there i beg to differ there there there, there has been uh, 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 scholarly criticism of of the whole notion of right to privacy well, i agree and and it's not at all inconceivable that that criticism will be reflected in a brief before the supreme court and well, I that, don't that that very well may be but it doesn't in other words if the right to privacy exists if you believe the right to privacy exists and uh, um, uh, uh, um, and I believe you have stated in uh, um, uh, what was that in the CNN D case? Thank you, Mr. Case. Was that in the article? Excuse me, one moment. Pardon me. I believe, and I can't I can't pin down where you said it. It was in an article. I don't think you'll find it. In the it Panhandle somewhere. article, did you say that one uh, that? That, uh, that, that the right to privacy is one of the deepest and most profoundly held beliefs in our society? I, I, don't, I don't recall having said that, Senator. Oh, I see. Let me, let me, I'm sorry, I misspoke. Um, what was being referred to was your, your answer to me earlier saying that in order to meet your test, it has to be one of the deepest and most pr profoundly held views in society. And you always, do you, do, you, do you have any doubt the right to privacy is one of those uh, deeply and profoundly held view of American society? Forget the Constitution. Let's just talk politics, you and me. Uh, it, it, it's very hard to answer. You, you, <laughs> you began this line of questioning by answering me, never mind what the right of privacy consists of. I can't answer that question without knowing what you mean by the right of privacy. Sure, it, you can it, acknowledge whether or not you believe there is, in fact, let, let's, let's start over again. Clean the slate. Do you believe that Americans as a whole believe that there is a right to privacy that they have inherent, that they think they have a right to privacy? Do you think that's a deeply and profoundly held belief by American society? Whether it's whether it's found in the Constitution or found in natural law or found in their Bible or found in the Talmud, as a society. I mean, do you have any doubt that Americans believe? No, I, no, I, I, I'll, I'll give you that, Senator. I think I Good think man, I tell you, we're getting there. All right. Now, having said that, do you believe that there is any, is there any doubt in your mind that the Ninth Amendment, in conjunction with other amendments as it relates to particular assertions of particular rights of privacy, if I can find the Ninth Amendment here so I don't misquote it. Do you have the Ninth Amendment sitting there? Dig it out for me, will you? Um, the Roman numerals confuse me, Judge. I see if okay. yours is the same as mine. I have one here, too. All so. right. 
I almost read the 11th. <laughs> the enumeration in the Constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people. Is there any doubt in your mind that the people at the time and now believe they have retained the right to privacy, whatever that means. Uh, no, I, I, I think there's no doubt in my mind of that. Okay. Secondly, if in fact that, well, I don't have to go any further actually, you've, I mean, because in fact it seems to me if there, in some form or another, there is a constitutional protected right of privacy. The, what, what that means remains to be seen, whether it means the right to engage in homosexual activity in one's bedroom um, or anything else remains, I'm not going to ask you to comment on that. But let me, let me, let me, let me, and I guess my time, I don't mind, I know my time is up, but let me pursue this one step further if I may. When I look at your musings on the, uh, and I don't mean that in a derogatory way, because you, I love to read what you've written. I love the way you go about it. I mean, you, I, I, I wish I had had you in class. I'm probably too old to have had you in class, but uh, you're the kind of guy that I would have liked to have been in class. I could have gotten by with you because we could talk about philosophy. As long as you didn't ask me the, what the case stood for, I'd be all right. Um, uh, but the, um, when I tie your musings on original meaning and original intent and where I must admit I put you, I put you more in the, the school of the original intent fellas than I do in the living constitution area. I begin to be concerned about, and, 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 and then, then when I take your second stated principle in the Panhandle article, which is basically that if it is a long-held societal view that has been, in effect, recognized through constitutional interpretation, cases law, Supreme Court cases, then you would be very reluctant to overturn it. Is that, if I read that correctly, am I, am I putting words in your mouth? No, I, I, yes, I think that's a fair statement. Okay. Now, uh, the irony of all ironies is that the people who are concerned about you, some who are concerned about you, women's groups who are concerned, not all, uh, pro-choice women's groups who are concerned about you, they are worried you'll use that rationale to overturn Roe v. Wade. That is that, we won't go through it all. Ironically, it seems to me you could read your view as saying, if that hangs in the law another 10 or 15 years, it'd be awful hard. You, uh, you would, by your own test, have trouble overruling Roe v. Wade. Um, so I guess what I'm asking, without asking about Roe v. Wade, is there a time frame? If, if, it's, on the, if, the book, if it's on the law, if the, <laughs> on the books, if you will, if it's settled constitutional law for an extended period of time, and the argument to overturn that settled constitutional principle does not, in fact, meet a, the test of, on its face, being consistent with what the correct constitutional principle is, do you have to stick with what the settled law is? I, you know, I know that sounds good, but you're making it understandably I, I, hard I, I, for I me agree, because we can't I agree talk with this, about specific cases. I agree with the statement that, that, uh, that long-standing cases are more difficult to overrule than recent cases. What do you have to find as a matter of constitutional principle to overrule long-standing cases? And I'm not talking about any one case now. Constitutional principles well, enshrined, it's been there, reaffirmed did. by cases for 20, 25 years. What do you have to find as a logic to overturn it? Well, in, in every case, Senator, you have to find that it's simply wrong, that it's not a correct but, interpretation of the Constitution. Okay, of that's course. what we're getting at. You begin How, with that. 
But how do but, you? But as I've said, some cases that are so old, even if you waved in my face a document proving that they were wrong when decided in, in 1803, uh, I think you'd have to say, sorry, too late. Uh, well, 1969. Well, <laughs> that's, that's not 1803. Uh, uh, all I really I am trying to get a sense of time. Is time certainly one of those. What you know? I mean, when is the it, wine? It's, it's not just a just a just. I, I don't want to mislead you into thinking it's just a function of time. No, I, 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 mean, don't, I don't some... read it as just a function. As I understand it, if in fact enough time has passed, and the, notwithstanding the fact you could argue that it was wrongly decided at the time because it was a over generous interpretation of a right recognized but expanded. That it becomes, if it becomes settled practice, and the argument to overturn it is not that it was made, it was an incorrect decision 25 years ago, but that, be, because it was too expansive, but is the argument required to overturn it that clearly on its face they disregarded what was the clear intention of the Constitution? Case in point, Plessy versus Ferguson. That was on the book. Can I interrupt the senator from Delaware? He asked the question: When is the wine aged? <laughs> well, I understand. I, I would the, say the, 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 the time, the wine's wide time comment. has come. I understand that, uh, but I, uh, I, I, I appreciate his biting humor. Um, <laughs> but I thought there's a serious line of questioning. I'll cease and let my. Well, it's not a question of cutting That's you right. off. It's no, a question that the senator from Illinois has been waiting and. Senator Milloy just asked questions. If he can ask him again, I have no further questions. Thank you very much.